Allison Greenleaf and Jeff Dolphin are very skilled trappers. They are also biologists with Arizona Game and Fish, and they're hoping to catch an endangered species, the Mexican gray wolf. This specific area right here, they've been food caching these guys like all summer long, but wolves, when they've been coming into a spot consistently, they'll have like their own trails coming into it, but we're able to watch them on trail camera too. So certain rocks and logs that they always kind of come and sniff and they might urinate near or mark, scent mark or something. Those are good spots to set. And if you just put a different scent right there, then they'll go and check it out. So you just got to make sure everything's set up right. The wolf's food cache consists mainly of roadkill elk that the biologists have collected and then placed in an area close to their den. All trappers are differently. Some people, some trappers make it look like a M80 bomb went off. Um, it looks very obvious that there's something there, but they catch wolves as well. But, you know, everybody's different. I got trained to, to try and disguise it as much as possible. So that's kind of how I do it. In March 1998, as part of the Mexican Wolf Recovery Program, 11 captive raised wolves were released into historical wolf habitat in eastern Arizona and western New Mexico. Additional releases have taken place since then. With the birth of the first wild-born litter from a wild-born parent in 2002, the Mexican Wolf Reintroduction Project entered into a new phase. Natural reproduction began to replace reintroductions from captive populations. Arizona Game and Fish continues to work with its federal partners to monitor and sustain these wolves. Today, they're hoping to catch a few of this year's pups from the Blue Stem Pack. It is currently one of 12 packs totaling 44 collared Mexican gray wolves and four single wolves living throughout the recovery area. The main goal is to put a GPS collar on a young wolf and take blood samples to keep track of the genetics of the pack. The alpha male from this pack was found dead, so the biologists want to know if he was able to father these pups before he died or has a new alpha male bred with the female. And there's so many reasons why we need to collar and capture and handle them um, to answer all these questions. This population only came from like seven individuals and so just to manage the genetics and keep the genetic integrity within the wild population we have to we have to be kind of heavy-handed um, and uh, with the amount of illegal killings and and, and uh, unnatural losses that we have too, we need to be able to keep really good track of, uh, of the wolves and look for other factors why, you know, we have low pup survival. The traps are padded, as Jeff demonstrates, so they won't harm the wolves. Once all the traps are set, the biologists retreat to their nearby camp and wait. They know when the pack comes out to feed at night is their best chance of trapping success. Each trap is rigged with an alarm that sends a signal back to camp when it's deployed. That way Jeff and Allison make sure the animal is in the trap for the shortest time possible. Tonight, from the time the pup was snared until he was removed from the trap, was less than 10 minutes. The first thing we want to do is just check him out, make sure he's breathing and, and he looks okay. Nothing traumatic on the, on the paw that he got trapped on. You'd attend to that probably first if there was. And then the main thing you want to do is get the collar. That's our, our main focus. If he gets away, at least he has a collar and we can get him back. The second most important thing is to get his blood because we need to check genetics, which is pretty important right now. And then we want to get the vaccines into him. And we just give him the regular kind of puppy vaccines that your domestic dog would get as well, because we do have parvo and distemper that are out here and rabies. Once his eyes and muzzle are covered, the pup becomes very docile, so there's no need to tranquilize him. All of the wolves in Arizona are given identification numbers. This young male is M1275. He's about four months old, 27 pounds. He looked great. 6.3 centimeters length. His coat looked really good. He had 
so. good weight on him for that age. We gave him a score of a three, and the highest you can get is a five, which we hardly ever give to any of these guys. Um, a nice looking wolf is usually a three, and that's what, that's what we put him at, so. Since M1275 is still growing, his collar is lined with foam that will wear away over time, allowing the collar to expand with him. It takes less than an hour for the biologists to complete their work, and then the young wolf is ready to be released so he can rejoin his pack. You know, this went really well here. If you catch a wolf like on the second night or the first night, that's really, really good. When you do it enough, you're on enough trap lines and you know, if you're out there, you're on like day 22 or, you know, you're out there for a month and you haven't caught anything yet, it's really discouraging. But, I mean, we, we gather information all summer long leading up to this, you know, and uh, that's kind of what trapping involves is just you get all your best information and then when the first week of August hits, then, you know, you, you apply all that and try and go out and and get everything collared that you can. The information these biologists gather will go a long way in determining if this species can successfully be recovered in Arizona. The Mexican wolf is an endangered species rarity. Its major recovery needs are not habitat management and restoration. Rather, reintroduced wolves show very clearly what is needed to achieve recovery, which is primarily education and tolerance. It takes a special kind of person to dedicate the time and resources required to help recover these animals. For both Jeff and Allison, this is more of a calling than a job. I've always wanted to, I just never really ever deviated from it. They'd have ambassador wolves, the Division of Wildlife in the 80s would come to the schools and stuff and I always thought that was really cool and then I, I don't, can't remember the age I was but it was, you know, you, you reach the realization like, hey, we don't have like grizzly bears up in the in the Rockies or wolves in the Rockies. And then you were like, well, what happened to them? I think, you know, the wolves are recovered in various places around the country and here it just hasn't happened yet. So I wanted to to come back after doing, you know, various other projects and things like that. When this job opened up, I thought it would be a worthwhile endeavor to try and give it a shot, you know, and, and work with these awesome people and see if we can make make a difference. And I feel like we are. I feel like it's like the population's slowly starting to creep up there. So it's, it's starting to, to look a little more promising.